was Dua Lipa with Future Nostalgia. And before that, we had the average white band with Let's Go Round Again. I'm joined now by a very special guest, Dane Cranberger from Mind Blue Light. Good morning, Dane. Good morning. How are you doing? Yes, very well, thanks. And you? Yeah, not too bad. So can you tell us a little bit about Mind Blue Light? Because I know a lot of people will probably have heard of Mind. So is Mind Blue Light sort of a an annex of Mind, the charity? Yeah, so the Blue Light program is run by Mind, um, and it's a program that focuses on supporting emergency services staff, so police, fire, ambulance, so anyone who's an emergency responder. Uh, so the program ran uh, for from 2015 to 2018, um, and then unfortunately funding came to an end. But more recently, it's been reinvigorated thanks to funding from the Royal Foundation, so the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's um, COVID-19 uh, response fund. So as part of that, we're offering the program again, which is really great. And I suppose it goes without saying, really, that this last year has been incredibly difficult for everyone, but above all for emergency service workers. Do you have an idea that you could give us of the scale of the impact it's had on, on sort of their mental health? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so we commissioned uh, a research project into looking at the uh, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on emergency services. Uh, so we had 4,000 uh, staff respond and uh, two in three, so two thirds of emergency services personnel said that their mental health had suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So it had deteriorated. We know that blue light uh, emergency services staff already have very difficult challenging roles even without the COVID-19 pandemic but uh, you know when you compound things like making day-to-day -day decisions that might have life and death consequences as well as having that concern that you as an emergency responder might contract the virus yourself you might pass it on to your loved ones so all of those things layered on top of each other compound to increase that sense of stress and anxiety that emergency responders might be feeling. And how have Mind Blue Light sort of stepped up to offer support? I imagine that the pandemic has also made it difficult to offer support in the sort of traditional ways that you have. So has there been an increased online offering? How have you done it? Yeah, definitely. There's, it is difficult. Um, and a lot of emergency services uh, staff have said, our jobs are incredibly busy. You know, we're, we're, we're running a ragged trying to respond to the pandemic and just in general have very busy roles. So how do we access support? when we need it. And uh, one of the key aims of the Blue Light program is to make that support really accessible through, as you say, things like online uh, resources, information, um, and through things like our, the, the Our Frontline program, um, we join up with partners like Shout to offer um, a text service. Uh, so there's there's a range of different ways in which um, Blue Light personnel can get support and get, get access to it quickly, but also things that are really practical and bite-sized that they can fit into their daily roles. So things that aren't going to be really time consuming or unrealistic for someone who's working in those types of roles. And have you had any idea um, since the start of the pandemic, the scale of the impact that your work has had? Have you had any first-hand testimonies of how much it's helped? Uh, so the the relaunch program um, was was uh, the 31st of March. So very recently, we've relaunched um, the new Blue Light program. From from the previous program um, a, a couple of years ago, um, we noticed a huge increase in the number of uh, staff. So I think we it started around a third of of Blue Light staff saying that they felt comfortable talking about mental health in their workplace, and then that doubled to to two thirds um, after the program. So. It's great to see that the program can have such a big impact on people feeling comfortable about talking about mental health, but then also recognizing that they need support too. If there's um, a lot of people talk about the NHS heroes and this hero narrative that we have in the UK, I think is very well-meaning, but what it can place is unrealistic expectations on emergency responders that they are unstoppable and um, invincible, whereas actually they're just people too, and they also need support. Um, so it's, it's really important that if you are working in the emergency services and you do need support that you, you, you know that there is support available for you, for you through the Blue Light program, but then also through a range of other sources as well. And have you noticed um, so far any, any hesitancy of, of staff wanting to come forward for, for those reasons? They feel like they can't come forward because they don't feel like they have a right to complain or they feel like they should be perfect all the time and just go, go, go. Uh, definitely, there's, as I say, that 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 kind of hero narrative does uh, have an impact. Um, a, a lot of staff have said, you know, I, I don't feel like I, I, I want to be taking up 
additional resources in, in accessing support. I'm supposed to be the one who's supporting other people. So it feels wrong of me to be accessing that support myself. And, and that's that's really challenging for, for a lot of stuff. And, and we really want to reiterate that everybody's mental health is important. And especially those who are working in really challenging environments, that if you are struggling, that you do access that support that's available. And obviously, as you said, you've set up relatively recently and um, the pandemic, the sort of second wave is coming. We're coming out of that second wave and hopefully we're coming into um, a new phase of the pandemic where we can live a little bit more normally and the NHS won't be as overwhelmed as they have been. Um, How looking forward are you going to be offering support? Because I can imagine that a lot of emergency service workers will be struggling with the things that have happened to them for years to come. Yeah, definitely. We, we definitely want to continue operating uh, as we are and offering that support, not just now, but in the future as well. And, and making that support, support sustainable because um, we don't want this to just be a reaction to the pandemic. We know that even before the pandemic, uh, Blue Light personnel, emergency services, staff have, have struggled with their mental health. Um, they are placed in at-risk situations where um, they're as I say, trying to make um, potentially life or death decisions, and that's always going to have an impact on somebody. So it's important that beyond the pandemic, that support continues to be made available. And we will, of course, um, ensure that we, we do everything that we can to make sure that it is. And it's great to see that this initiative has been set up, you know, to, not as a reaction, but, you know, as, as a way of helping out these workers that really do need the help. Do you think that there's more that the government could be doing um, within the NHS to make sure that that support is kind of a given as part of the job, if that makes sense? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we would always welcome any additional support that the government can provide to the NHS, whether that's funding, you know, campaigns, additional support, just reinforcing the messages that we have been putting out there for a long time about the importance of mental health, not just for emergency services stuff, but but for, for everybody. Um, so, of course, we would always welcome any any additional support the government would be would, willing to provide. And before I let you go, I'm sure a lot of our listeners would love to be able to get involved and help in some way. Is there any way people can get involved either by donating or as a volunteer, perhaps? Uh, as we would always welcome any donations and volunteer help. I mean, if you get, if visit our website, www.mind.org.uk, there's information about the Blue Light program and also ways that you can get involved as well. And you can also find you on Twitter, right? At Mind Blue Light, I believe, is, is oh, the app. The yes, thank you very much. There too. <laughs> well, listen, Dave, it's been absolutely fantastic to talk to you. And thank you from everyone here at BCR for the amazing work you're doing to support emergency service workers. Thank you so much for having me. Now, don't go anywhere, guys, because we've got some more fantastic music on the way from George Ezra and Joel Corey in just a moment. Black Country Radio. Moldy award-winning blue.